If you want proof Samsung is becoming Apple, the very thing it swore to destroy, look no further than the S24. It is to Samsung what iPhone 12, 13, 14 and even 15 are to Apple. Mostly the same phone as the previous generation with negligible upgrades. But that doesn't mean the S24 is a bad phone. In fact, it is a phone that comes in a complete package. Probably the biggest criticism the S24 received is for its design. While being similar to its older sibling, it's also a carbon copy of the iPhone. Honestly, I cannot tell you how many times I mistook the S24 for an iPhone. The flat sides, the flat panel and the finish just make it look and feel like an iPhone. Now from a consumer standpoint, that's actually good. You are getting a premium finish that's akin to an iPhone. Honestly though, 90% of the people don't care about the design. They slap on a case and forget what it even looks like. People who love compact phones will be delighted with the S24. I had no issues rocking this phone with a single hand. It is the most compact Android phone with a 6.2 inch display. And let's talk about that display because it is easily the best part about using the phone. The bezels are so thin that they put mostly all phones to shame. Not only that, but the bezels are also uniform, something Samsung fans have been asking for a long time. But they're not the only praiseworthy feature of the display. The display in itself is a flagship level panel that is out of this world. 120Hz and 2600 nits are numbers many flagships worth thousand dollars fail to achieve. Using this phone has been extra fun due to this display. It's responsive, snappy, fluid, extra bright and well calibrated for just about everything. I'm really happy Samsung didn't cripple the display on the smaller phone just cause it's cheaper than the rest. And the same thing goes for the battery. Now the phone has a 4000 mAh cell which mostly lasts a full day depending on usage. I used it mostly on Wi-Fi so battery life on data may vary. Also, as a work from home individual, I rarely have issues with battery life. I do however have issues with the charging speed. It is just too slow. 25 watt wired is not acceptable in an Android phone. I also wish it had Qi 2 wireless charging. Other than that, no issues on the battery side. I also had no issues with the performance. One good thing about living in Canada is that we get the Snapdragon version of the phone. From what I've heard, the Snapdragon version is much better than Exynos. There is a bigger discussion to be had on this topic and I don't think it'll change anytime soon. Nonetheless, the phone has been plenty fast for me. Opening apps, playing games, multitasking and even video processing is ablaze. CapCut video processing is even faster than the iPhone. I think it's due to the compression that happens when starting a new project which doesn't happen on the iPhone. Regardless, this phone once again proves that Android is just as fast if not faster than the iPhone. Probably the only reason I wouldn't get this phone and it's purely personal and subjective is the software. I come from the world of iPhones and Pixels. Their software is clean and works well without any bells and whistles. While One UI is fast and fluid, it just isn't for me. There's one too many features and apps. There are multiple Google and Samsung apps, then there's Galaxy Store, Galaxy Theme, Goodlock and so much more. It kind of becomes overwhelming at one point. Now I know most people love this or don't use it at all but I prefer to have just a cleaner UI with the basic apps I need. This is one of the reasons I'm not switching to the S24 and did switch back to the iPhone. And since we are on the topic of software, let's briefly discuss the Galaxy AI features which are free for now but might be locked behind a paywall later. I have not used them a lot. Circle to search is the only AI feature I found myself using every day. The rest of the AI features are nice to have in case they are needed. Other than that, basic functions such as Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, phone calls, speakers and haptics are top notch. Where Samsung needs to improve are the cameras. While the S24 has really good cameras, it's mostly been the same setup for years. There have not been any sort of improvements in the ultrawide or telephoto lens. I recently did a camera comparison between the S24 and the iPhone 15 and while the S24 does give the iPhone 15 a run for its money, yet there's still room for improvement. 
And that's evident from the shots you can see. The colors, dynamic range, contrast, details and everything else are pretty solid. On a few occasions though, I didn't like the skin tone reproduction of the S24, but that's an area that's tough to master. I do have to applaud the phone for its versatility. Even though the 3x telephoto is nothing to brag about, it's still something Apple and Google fail to provide with their entry-level flagships. The night photography capabilities of the phone are also commendable. As mentioned many times, I don't take a lot of nighttime photos, so this is a part of the review that doesn't interest me too much. What does interest me are the video capabilities. The phone boasts an impressive 8K video recording feature, which I didn't use. In the iPhone 15 comparison, the S24 did do pretty well, but not well enough. I feel Android phones have a lot of ground to cover until they can compete with the iPhones. For general video capture though, the S24 does a more than well enough job. The quality is exceptional and there is also a pro mode for users who want to get the most out of this camera setup. The front camera is also up there with the rear camera. The skin tone reproduction against the sun is really accurate. And that is the S24. A phone that's mostly similar to the S23 with minor upgrades. Until now, Samsung has gotten away by giving users a very similar experience with the entry-level phone. But I think starting with the S25, Samsung really needs to step it up. For users coming from the S21 or older, the S24 would make a solid upgrade. For the rest, I would wait until the S25. That's it for this video folks, subscribe and I'll catch you in the next one.